what it was like to be inside of that. Was it hot? And did it itch? Mr. Bartlett came out and said another prayer over Sam. I tried to pray myself, but my mouth was dry and I couldn't get the words out. They turned Sam sideways to the crowd. Three soldiers stepped in front of him and raised their muskets. They were so close the gun muzzles were almost touching Sam's clothes. I heard myself scream, don't shoot him, don't shoot him. And at that moment, Sam slammed backwards as if he'd been knocked over by a mallet. I never heard the guns roar. He hit the ground on his belly and flopped over on his back. He wasn't dead yet. One of the demons that's conjured up. So. The temperature of the room dropped fast. Ice formed on the curtains and crusted thickly around the lights in the ceiling. The glowing filaments in each bulb shrank and dimmed, while the candles that sprang from every available surface like a colony of toadstools had their wicks snuffed out. The darkened room filled with a yellow, choking cloud of brimstone in which indistinct black shadows writhed and roiled. From far away came the sound of many voices screaming. Pressure was suddenly applied to the door that led to the lamp. It must have written 5,000 pages by now. The Dresden taxi driver, too. Mary O'Hara is a trained nurse, which is a lovely thing for a woman to be. Mary admired the two little girls I brought, mixed them in with her own children, sent them all upstairs to play games and watch television. It was only after the children were gone that I sensed that Mary didn't like me or didn't like something about the night. She was polite, but chilly. It's a nice, cozy house you have here, I said, and it really was. It's a very sad ending. It's profoundly moving, and it's gritty, and it's realistic. And I can see why perhaps people might feel that they want to uh, protect their children from some of it. Steinbeck tells the story of a friendship between two itinerant farm workers, George and Lenny. Lenny's a gentle giant. He's very strong, very large, and... It seems small for Meg's idea of a tramp. The age or the sex was impossible to tell, for it was completely bundled up in clothes. Several scarves of assorted colors were tied about the head. A man's felt hat perched atop. A shocking pink stole was knotted about a rough overcoat and black rubber boots covered the feet. Abigail and the beautiful pony. There was a girl named Abigail who was taking a drive through the country with her parents when she spied a beautiful, sad-eyed, gray and white pony. And next to it was a sign that said, For sale. Cheap. Oh, said Abigail, may I have that pony? May I please? 